Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be trying some new stuff with a graphics imaging program, so um, for any technical issues I do apologize ahead of time, but the problem that we're going to be working on today is actually looking at some geometry, and what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be looking at this proof and designing a two-column proof where we want to show that these angles J and K are congruent to each other. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at what's given here, and we're told that angle JAB, JAB, which is this entire angle right here, is congruent to angle KBA, which is this entire angle right here. And then we're also told that angles 1 and angle 2 are congruent to each other. Well, angle 1 is just this part right here, and angle 2 is just this little part right here. So with that, we have to somehow come up with the rest of this proof on our own. Well, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say that it should be pretty much given that we should copy over everything that we see up here. So I'm just going to say that angles J, A, B congruent to angle K, B, A, and also that angle 1 is also congruent to angle 2, and the reason for that is, well, it's given. Okay, now, from there, what I'm going to look at is this triangle that I'm going to highlight in green here for a second. If I look at this triangle here in green, what I can see is just from that triangle, it has these two angles right here, angle 1 and angle 2, that are contained just within that triangle and I really can't name the triangle yet because it doesn't have a letter so what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a letter up here and I'm going to call it M so if I'm going to add it into the diagram I need to add it as a statement so I'm going to say let M be the intersection of the segment AK and JB so of segments AK and segment JB. Now that I've done that, what I can do is I can say, okay, from there, I can say that in the triangle AMB, that segment AM is congruent to segment BM. Now, the reason that I can say this is for a few different reasons. One of the reasons is if you've done this proof before, you know that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. If you haven't seen that proof before, you could also use another theorem called the hinge theorem. And what the hinge theorem says is that if you have a triangle and you know that you have two congruent sides within that triangle and the angles are the same measurement, then the opposite sides must also be the same measurement. Conversely, that also means that within a single triangle, if you have two equal angles, the sides opposite those angles will also be congruent. So what that means here is that if I erase just the sides that I'm talking about here for a moment, that this side that I just erased, which is opposite this angle here, is also the same as this side that's right here. So essentially what that means is that I've shown that segments BM and AM are congruent through the hinge theorem. So if I wanted to mark that up now, what I can say here is coming over here and grabbing a color to show that those are congruent, we know that this right here, change over to my pencil so I can actually mark, this side is the same as this side right here. Now from that, what I can also do is use these angles that I see right here to get some other measurements that will help me to prove that this is congruent. Okay, so what we're going to do, sorry, um, what we're going to do here is go back into our black marker and say, okay, if I look at this entire angle, J, A, B, I really don't want this angle. What I want to do is I want to focus instead on this little triangle right here. I'm going to shade it in gray if I can. So I'm trying to get this triangle here and show you that it's really the same as this triangle right here. Well, how do we do that? Okay, the way that I'm going to go about it is by saying this. Okay, 
this little angle right here is really this black angle minus this red angle. So if I'm going to say that, I need to give some kind of name and way of saying that. So I'm going to say that, well, the big angle, angle J, A, B, is really equal to the angles J, A, M, plus the angle M, A, B. Okay, and if you look at that, you can see M, A, B is angle 1. I'm also going to say that angle, that the big angle K, B, A is also equal to the angle K, B, M plus the angle M, B, A. So what that lets me do now is since I already know that these two angles right here are angles 1 and angle 2, what I could really say is that this right here is angle 1, this right here is angle 2, and that because these are really the same, then that means that these two angles right here also have to be the same. Because if the big angles are congruent, these two angles over here, these were the big angles right here. If these two angles were the same to begin with, and I'm adding two angles over here that are the same already, then these two also have to be the same. So that lets me show that this little angle right here, coloring it in blue, and this little angle right here in blue must be congruent. Well, if I'm going to say that, it really helps if I show it in the next little part here. So what I'm going to do is sliding my uh, diagram up just a little bit here so I have some more room to write. I'm going to say those little blue angles right here, so my fifth statement here, angles um, J A M is congruent to angle K B M and that is just going to be through angle subtraction. Now from there what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I see in this triangle that I have right here, moving this down, in this triangle I already have an angle and a side. If I could find another angle that I know is congruent to some other angle in this triangle, then I would have some kind of a valid congruency. Well, if I look at these lines that are crossing right here, going from J to B and K to A, I'll see that they make an X. So what that means is that I have a set of vertical angles. So that means that this angle here has to be the same as this angle here. So knowing that, I'm going to come down here and add into my statements, move my diagram down so I can actually see the names of the angles that I'm working with here. I'm going to say that angle J, M, A, has to be the same as angle K, M, B because of vertical angles. There we go. And now, if we look at these triangles, I see an angle aside and an angle on that side is between the two angles. So that means that these two triangles must be congruent. So looking at that, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say that the triangle AMJ, so triangle AMJ, is congruent to the triangle BMK. And I'll trust that you guys know how to find the correct order of triangle letters. And the reason that I can say this is because of angle side angle congruency. And then from there, what I can do is I can come back up here to what I was trying to prove, which is that angle J is the same as angle K. Well, if you look at our congruency here, J is in the same position as K, so I can just simply say that angle J is now congruent to angle K. And the reason I can say that is because of CPCTC, which stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So this particular proof is rather short, but there's a lot going on with this diagram that if you're not familiar with basic geometry and the 
thought processes behind it, you definitely want to take a look at vertical angles and the correspondence between congruent, congruent triangles. I hope that helps, and if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. My email address, again, is drennymath at gmail.com, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.